Hello, here's a tutorial on getting your Raspberry Pi to work for you as a guitar effects processor. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and start this writing. This is just the Wheezy Raspbian, Raspbian, Raspbian image that is available from the Raspberry Pi website. Um, and I'm going to pause this so we don't have to watch this whole, the whole time, but um, I'm writing this to a SanDisk 4 gigabyte card. It was about $7 on Amazon. I've had a lot of luck with them. And uh, it just pops up, and you want to make sure to write it to that device, which I think it was the only option for me. It's pretty smart to, it doesn't try to write it to your C drive, which would be a hot mess, of course. So, and I'm using Win32 Disk Imager because it was just easy and free, and of course, I'm on Windows. So we are going to well let me talk real quick while this is going um, it's important that um, I mean you can't see it next to me but I have my Raspberry Pi plugged in to my router directly and that way I can SSH into it and I'm using putty from Windows um, it's sometimes a much better idea to SSH into it from uh, some Linux variant because you could do X11 forwarding that way and we'll get into that later but that'll allow you to use the GUI remotely um, but you know what I have not done yet is set up Xming and that's just supposed to allow you to do X11 forwarding from this computer to you know my Raspberry Pi well actually vice versa so just I mean in case I wasn't clear it means that your Raspberry Pi will actually be running the software but not the GUI whereas the remote computer is actually going to be running the GUI. Okay, so this is not connected right now. Um, I'm not connected to my Raspberry Pi so this this window is inactive. And let me just pause for a couple seconds. We'll get that done. Okay, that puppy is done. And it gives a funny horn sound when it's done. Makes you think that something went wrong but it's just fine. Um, okay, so I'm going to take that out close to the mic so you can hear it. <laughs> and I'm putting it into my Raspberry Pi. Okay. And it's in. I'm going to unplug the power from the Pi, put it back in. Now I have another monitor over here so I can see that it's actually booting. But we're going to log it remotely because that's where a lot of the power is. Um, okay, so I'm going to I'm going to actually shut down this terminal. No, I'm I'll leave it up for a bit. And let's go ahead and get into the uh, amp brownie here, the Raspberry Pi default. Um, it's going to start up using DHCP which means your router is going to assign it its own IP address according to what's on your network and all that. I know that mine happens to start on 115 so let's go ahead and log in. Okay, we're in. We're um, logged into the Raspberry Pi that's right next to me from this computer so good start took me a little while to figure this out the first time because I'm not very great with networking and finding the proper IP I had to go log into my router and it wasn't showing me the titles the host names of everything so I just had to start pinging things and trying to log into all the IP addresses until finally I was able to log into it and you might have to go through that process also so what we have to do is get the shell script into the Raspberry Pi. Um, I don't know of a really easy way to do it other than um, copying and pasting it. So you can get it from the website. I'm going to go ahead and take it directly from my Vim, which is running the most recent version. Um, so I've, I've copied it into my buffer. So I can, uh, Raspberry Pi is going to come up, it's going to, it's going to be loaded with Debian. Um, so let's go ahead and create the script. 
new file. So I paste by right mousing onto it, get rid of that, and I get rid of that. And then we're going to do write. And then we're going to get out of there. So if you don't know how to use VI, you can use nano or add or whatever you like. But if you don't know how to use any of that stuff, then probably just need to wait for a bit. Okay, so we have the script ready to go. Um, in order to run it, we have to type in bin bash because for whatever reason um, I can't run the setup script by just typing it in. But, you know, we'll get there. Okay, so we want to start with part one. That's going to set our network to a static IP, and it's telling you right here what it is. If you want to change this um, to a different static IP, just open up that shell script and make the adjustment. It's very easy. Um, so remember, when we reboot this thing, it's not going to be available on 115 anymore. Okay, pressing enter. Okay, so it's telling me uh, we're going to go into the raspy config, and I need to overclock and expand the root FS. So here we go. Um, let's first do the expand. Done. Okay, that was easy. Let's go to overclock. Right now, I've only been going to medium. Uh, it seems I seem to have plenty of room on the processor, and um, and it hasn't given me any errors. So we're gonna keep with that and finish. If you'd like to reboot now, we'll say no. And then the script just tells us to reboot. <laughs> so we hit enter and then um, sudo reboot. So naturally, it's telling us that we lost our connection. 115 is closed. We're going to open this one back up. Uh, now, this is when I was connecting to it earlier, before I did the complete re image. So we're just going to say restart session. Yes, whatever. P, I, RAS, very okay. Now we're into our new and improved Raspberry Pi. Um, we're going to run the script again. This time we're going to go to part two of the script. I know this isn't the perfect way to do it, but it's pretty simple to do it this way and we're going to stick with that. Okay, so you can see in here that we're getting the rpi.autostatic.com um, repos to um, to go to our source list. That's really important because we're going to be using patch versions of Guitarix, Jalv, and Jack. And remember, we're going to be using Jack 1 for this. Okay, so this is going to ask me if I want to install a couple things. I'm going to answer yes to them. Um, the list of what it's actually doing right now is pretty extensive. If you look through this cell script, let's, uh, I'm sorry, through the shell script, cell script is an internal thing that we're working on. Anyways, you can see all the things that are going on. So yes, a few packages are going to be installed. Um, we're increasing the shared memory by mounting um, extra size of the shared memory. It's like temp file. Um, turning off CPU scaling, disabling onboard sound card. Um, Prepending uh, these values to make sure that USB 1 is used and not USB 2. Which, funny note on that, if you have keyboard and mouse plugged into your computer, it's really not going. Mine didn't work after I switched to USB 1. I mean, the Raspberry does have some, it does have a bit of growing up to do, um, but for what I'm using it for, for this guitar effects um, tool, it's really cool. And I'm going to show you how to start up after we get some of these guys installed here. Um, and if this takes too long, I'm gonna s I'm gonna pause it and, and come back. Um, but what does work is your USB one sound device, and USB one sound device is like the R2 preamp that I'm using. I'm also using the 
Behringer, oh, what's that model? UCG102. It's like $32 on Amazon. So it's a much cheaper option than the $150 R2 preamp. I haven't heard how it sound or recorded any, any samples yet. But um, Jeremy, Autostatic, said that it turned out pretty good. So we're going to give that a shot pretty soon because, oh, it would be so cool to make a $60 package or even under $100. That sounded really great for recording or more, more likely live playing. Um, okay. Yes, take up that disk space. Handle that. I was installing Vim in here by default, but then I figured I'll start defending some Emacs or Super Edit lovers out there. So I did not do that. You're welcome. Jalva is getting set up. That is a command line utility that allows you to run plugins. I believe it's LV2 and LADSPA plugins. Um, mm -hmm, yes. And we're actually going to run the GX AMP plugin, which is a plugin version of GuitarX. Of course, GuitarX, if you, if you are not aware, um, let's see here. There's a screen reader page. It's to GuitarX. It's this really sweet effects software, and it's completely open source. And these developers are just extremely responsive. So it's hard to um, hard to choose anything else. This is it's just going really well. Taking this path. Now, the UI that we're going to be using doesn't look like this. I actually think it looks a bit better. It's a bit cleaner, a bit more modern and simple. But uh, you're going to be pulling up each of these pieces in their own um, Jalv setup and connecting them through Jack and all that. Now, I'm going to try to make this really quite automated and plug and play in the future, but I wanted to at least show you where I'm at now. Okay, we're going to pause and come back. Things are down installing now. And in the while that was going on, we did happen to install a jack start script. And this shuts down a couple things. Uh, make sure your memory is mounted properly and uh, starts up jack with some good settings. Okay, so that will have to do for now. And I'll make some other videos um, or I'll do what's needed to get you to the next step once I make them really quite easy. So thank you for watching, and um, if you don't like this process and it really sucks, then you should definitely help out. <laughs> All right, take care.